This is my 450 square foot woodworking workshop, prototype and manufacturing facility, storage and distribution center, filming studio, editing suite, swimming pool, and was also once my bedroom. Let's go take a look. So to begin with, we've got this, which is my new extra long wheelbase Mercedes Sprinter van. I'm going to be doing a van conversion with this over the next few months, so keep an eye out for that. But this is the main workshop. Now this space is an old mechanics garage, which still includes the pit, which is currently very, very flooded. Oh my. And when I moved in initially, we had plenty of space, but now I am at the limit. So some serious decisions had to be made as to how to divide this place up. To begin with, we've got the woodworking wall, which is where the heavy processing of my materials happen. And it's worth saying now, everything I reference in this video is linked in the description below. Now extracting from all of this machinery is my Axminster Hobby chip extractor. In terms of airflow, this thing is brilliant, but filtration? completely insufficient. Really, I just need to replace it with a bigger, better extractor, but I just can't fit it. And then we've got the routing area, which consists of a UJK router table powered by a DeWalt router. We've got the router bit cabinet, which there was a three or four part series on constructing. We've actually got a first aid kit this time, which contrasts to the other workshop tour. And we've got this lovely tape measure rack here as well. This router table has all the gizmos and gadgets and is extremely high quality probably the best you can get until needing to upgrade to a spindle molder. The router table is extracted from here using blast gates, as is the bandsaw. Now I have pushed this thing to its limits multiple times and it is a real workhorse of this workshop. The good thing about this is the router table acts as an outfeed for the bandsaw if I'm working with particularly long and heavy material, which in the words of Bob Ross is a happy accident. On the wall next to my bandsaw, I've got my spare blades, I've got my miter fence, I've got my hardware storage, sandpaper storage, and blanks for my knives. And I've got 500 of these that will be available this weekend. To find out more, sign up to the mailing list below. Moving on, we have got my sticker wall. If you can spot yourself on there, drop a comment below. And then we have got the Axminster Trade Spiral Head Planar Thicknesser. This machine is an absolute monster. Again, I've maxed it out multiple times, put all sorts of materials through it, and it has had no complaints. I really don't know what I would do without this thing. And so that's the end of the woodworking wall. Next, we've got my Festool CTM26, which is primarily used for cleaning the workshop. Previously, I was using the Bosch M-Class extractor for this purpose, but that's since been moved to a new area of the workshop, which you'll see later. Honestly, the main reason I purchased this Festool extractor, other than being an amazing piece of kit, is because of the remote Bluetooth switch. Next, we've got the clamp wall, which is currently occupied by all of these knife blanks. These are primarily the Axminster parallel jaw clamps, and they are amazing. These are a fraction of the price of the Bessies and perform exceedingly well. Then on the wall here, we've got various hangable objects such as spirit levels, rulers, saws. We've got my traveling toolbox, which I did an entire series on making. There'll be a link to that in the top corner. And we've got my actual toolbox, which stores all of my hand tools and has been kitted out with shadow foam. If you want to see how I laid this out, there's a link to a video on the second channel linked in the description. And then of course, we move on to the main set, which consists of glass cabinets, which display various joints. And then of course, the shelves, which include magazines, a joint practice frame, a snowman, a stupid plant, this awesome plaque that a viewer made me. We've got this joint prototype. We've got a crayon finish, link in the description below. We've got my world record dovetail attempt, link is also in the description below. We've got a model chair. We've got my first ever dovetail joint. We've got more books. And then hanging underneath that, we've got jars full of more random things. A Wi-Fi booster, my first ever woodworking piece, this awesome model of me, some cool pens. We've got an OSB plane, a marking gauge, another fake plant, lots more marking knives, an African blackwood box, a backgammon board, a babinga box, an uncarved bog oak spoon, some Marley speakers. Oh no, I've just seen what's behind here. <laughs> what? Is that OSB? Do you ever, did you ever see Liam's? No, that's his stabilised hair. Yeah, we started making cutlery. <laughs> you can't wait to eat with these. <laughs> yeah, mmm, tasty. And then below that, we've got my sharpening station, which is currently sat on my first ever workbench. On this, I've got a Tormek, I've got water stones, we've got the Axminster Ultimate Edge, and then center stage, we've got Bertha. This thing is my absolute pride and joy. There's a 10 part series on making it. And if you want plans, they're linked in the description. And by the way, a quick shout out to this workshop stool made by Sealy. It's adjustable height and padded seat makes it amazing for fine up close tasks such as layout. There's a link to it in the description below if you want one. On to consumable corner now. Here we go. So this is where I store all of my finishes, glues, consumables, as you'd expect. It's a right old mess at the moment. I've definitely outgrown it again. 
let's move on. Oh, and then this is where I store all of my batteries. So this is the mezzanine floor, which we did an entire series on building on back in 2020, but it's since been unlisted because it's not up to code. So here we've got a walnut desk that I built five years ago. One of the first ever projects I did on YouTube. We've got this area, which is my distribution storage area. We've got notebooks here that you can purchase from mattesley.com forward slash shop. And then on the shelves surrounding me, we've got various other things. In particular, we've got the Jesus pen. OG viewers of the channel will recognize this reference. I've got cameras that I've collected throughout my life, all the way from the Jackass videos that I used to film through to the one we're currently using now. And then I've got this six string bass guitar, which has a 21 part build series on YouTube, linked in the description below if you want to take a look. And then moving around here, we've just got a general storage area, cables, converters, air conditioner, and then through here, if you're ever interested, we've got... Oh, oh. Oh. That's where he went. Let me know. Then we've got the uh, now redundant Ozbank. The governments didn't bail that one out. Come on, Boris. And then moving on, we've got a leatherworking area, microwave, minigun. Glad to see the back end of that. Oh. Oh. And then we go downstairs again. The most annoying and frankly hazardous thing about the mezzanine floor is all the dust that settles up there. And then we move on to what was previously called Craft Corner. And this has changed a fair bit since the last workshop tour because we've added not one, but two spindle sanders. You'll see why this weekend. We've got a disc sander. And then ironically, having once said this, I could totally just unscrew these handles and turn my own cherry ones if I wasn't dangerous on a lathe, which I am. You'll never see a wood turning video from me. We've got the lathe here, which is the true workhorse of the workshop. I run this thing for hours on end. I've had no complaints for it. It's a truly amazing machine. Machine. As for extraction, this is where the Bosch extractor has now ended up. The previous extractor under here, the pneumatic NVD750, used to overheat to the point where it caused a genuine fire risk. This has since been replaced with the Bosch M-Class extractor and is linked up to all three machines via blast gates. For those of you that would turn, you'll know how difficult it is to catch all the dust, and so anything that this doesn't capture is caught mostly by this air filter. This is the Axminster Trade AT25 and it does a pretty good job. Obviously, because this is the main filming area, we've got curtains covering the window to hide any variability in light. And then we've got these LED panel lights to fill in the rest. Moving on, we've got guide rail storage. We've got the pillar drill behind me. And then down here, we've got the power tool workbench. It currently is used for a storage and assembly area, but it's an extremely versatile workbench and takes center stage in the workshop. There's a 10 part build series in the description below, and there's also plans available from my website. Moving on down this newly formed corridor, consisting of the bulkhead and the flooring, from the van outside, we've got the metal working area. Again, this is one of the most used areas in the workshop and I've severely outgrown it. There is literally no storage or work surface remaining. Next to that, we've got the metal working machinery consisting of this milling machine, which has seen some interesting operations. And we've got the metal working lathe. In this corner, we've got wood storage. We've got my Bosch 12 inch cordless miter saw. And we've got the pneumatic NVD 750 that I mentioned earlier that overheats. It's better here because it's just for single use rather than continuous use. As you can see, this area and the workshop in general is pretty cluttered. So I've got some news. The truth is, this decision is probably a year overdue by this point. And honestly, it's a pretty scary one. I have put everything into this place and had to sacrifice a lot in my personal life to make it work. And I make no complaints about this, by the way. You know, my ups and downs over the years have been very well documented. But the truth is I have, I've hit a limit and I need to move on. Now I tend to be someone who works hard, not smart. And no matter how much I convince myself that I can run this entire business while upholding such high standards across so many different areas, while doing it all from this place alone, you know, I've, I've got to draw a line at some point and start thinking about what's next. So as much as I love this place and spending almost every waking hour in here, or if I'm not in here, thinking about all the things I can do in here, I'm moving. I found a 1500 square foot premises just outside of London that is going to be my new base of operations. And while finding this place, I've been very, very picky at trying to find a place that not only suits my needs, but captures the undeniable character and homeliness that I've evolved in this place over the years. Because as hazardous, cold, cramped as this place is, it, it's me. 
a f mess. <laughs> now there are some risks involved with the move which I will cover in a later video, but the actual space itself is amazing. A spacious workshop, a dedicated space for metalworking and prototyping, a dedicated storage and distribution area, an office, a kitchen with a sink and, and a toilet, an actual toilet. So over the next few months, not only will I be converting that van outside into something I can live in full time, but I'll also be picking all of this up and moving it to a safer, cleaner, and hopefully more organized premises. In addition to that, I'll also be hiring again so I can focus on what I love doing and what I do best, which is making stuff with my hands and sharing it with you guys. Seriously, the limits of my vocabulary doesn't properly allow me to express how thankful I am to all of you who watch and take an interest in the things I do, particularly, particularly patrons. The reason for the lack of videos over the past couple of months is because I've been working on a new batch of marking knives and I've got a bunch of them that I'm going to be releasing this weekend. In fact, the launch of the knives is gonna have an accompanying video to effectively be the fundraiser to make this transition happen. So if you wanna grab a knife from me, keep an eye out for that, but of course I stock up the things on my website as well notebooks merchandise plans or alternatively i've got a wish list for things i need to help get this off the ground and so if you are able to support in any way possible hopefully by now i've expressed how much that would mean to me i'm going to stop rambling now and let you guys get on thank you very much for watching enjoy the video this weekend and i'll see you in the next one